Hello friends, welcome to Tech Lake Video Tutorials. A previous video, I gave more information about uh, how to install self-hosted integration runtime to connect on-premises machines. And uh, I created link service for file system. So this video, I'm going to give you another information related to how to create a link service to connect on-premises databases. So this link service we created in previous video, how to connect to on-premises file system. So another video, like this video, I'm going to give more information about. Consider if you want to connect to on-premises databases, like uh, we will install Oracle database. It's a free and like Express Edition is available, which we will install that and we will connect. So in this video, I'm going to give you how to install Oracle database in your Windows operating system, then how to connect that database in ADF. So how to migrate that data from your on-premises database to data lake. So that we will understand in this video. So let's go to that local mission. I'm having this Windows mission. First, we need to download that Oracle software from Oracle website. You can search in a Google Oracle. 11G Express Edition, uh, you can download 11G Express Edition database. So sometimes we, we won't get directly from home page because now uh, 19C, 21C is available, cloud databases are available. You see, you don't get it directly. So what we can do, we can search in archive location. We can search in archive location. There's a Oracle uh, database XE enterprise edition, uh, sorry, express edition. So which is 12C version. So we don't need a 12C version just for learning. We'll go with uh, 11G version, it's old version, uh, which you can find in uh, archive folder. Archive download, okay? You can search in archive download. So this is 11G released to and uh, Express Edition. Click on the 64-bit, download this software. And uh, you should have an account to download this. You should have an account to download this. Uh, if you don't have an account, create a new account and download. It's a free only. You don't need to pay anything. I'm having existing account, which I have created almost 15 years back. Just uh, checking that. Yeah, so account is working. So you should have account. It's uh, it's a go and create any n number of accounts in Oracle just to download the software. It's free only. You don't need to pay anything. Just you need to use your Gmail ID. Okay. So now the software is around uh, three seventeen MB. It's a smaller database, eleven G database. So we will connect this database from Azure Azure Data Factory. So you can open this database, install this database. So disk one setup file. You can click on the setup file. So I'm going to install Oracle 11 G Express Edition. Okay. So which you can download from archive location. Just you can search in archive. Archive download, you will get this. Even 11G Enterprise Edition also is available. That size will be around a 2 GB is the Enterprise Edition, okay, which you can download, which you can install this version also. Any database is enough, just we will connect on premises and uh, we'll test that. So, this database is going to use less computer resources. That's the Express Edition. I'm going to install this Express Edition. So click on Next and accept license in terms and conditions. And this is the Express Edition. It's going to install on uh, C drive and click on Next. So enter the password, any password which you can enter.
so it is going to create a, a port number 1521 and a listener 8080 and that information you can, you can find that so it will be available within a few minutes like one or two minutes it will take it won't take much time once this database is available right so we can connect in adf so adf we can create a link service to connect this database then we can read data from this database the database will be available in my local machine but we can connect from cloud through adf azure data factory but how it will connect using self-hosted integration runtime we already installed that self-hosted integration runtime which you can find this in our windows machine this one so go through previous video i have explained how to configure the self-hosted integration runtime on windows machine okay so it should be up and running then only we can connect this data factory from local machine to data factory yeah and uh, here you can find all the apps running apps or if you go to services so we can go to oracle service oracle uh, service this is the se okay oracle service xe so this is the running state okay then uh, just wait another if this listener also should be running then only we can connect this listener and uh, service xe this both should be running then only we can connect so done finished just open sql plus it's a command line you can see this open this if you know username password you can log in otherwise you can log in as a sysas sysdpa sysas sorry connect sysas sysdpa so now we connected without password without password just enter it you can connect i'll change the password there's a username called hr so alder user username is a hr identified by hr i'm going to change the password for hr by default this account will be logged i'm going to unlock this account alter user hr account unlock this is oracle commands where we can change the password where we can unlock the account alter user username identified by password then alter user username account unlock now i'll connect hr account so here you can find this is a table name called employees you can see 107 records are available we'll connect this table and we'll read this data and we'll load data into data lake gen2 table okay gen2 uh, file so how to connect this so go to a data factory create a new link service i'll uh, explain again manage link services create a new link service under databases you can find the database here this is the oracle database provide database uh, like link service name oracle exe on premises select a self-hosted integration runtime and host name so local host or uh, my system name my system name is this one port number is 1521 default port number is 1521 and default sid is xe for express edition sid is x so that is service id then username is hr password also hr then connect actually this database is not available in azure this is available in on-premises but we are able to connect on-premises database you see connection is successful let me explain this port number sid where you can find this information if you go to your local mission so we installed oracle database so where it will be available so go to your c drive okay and there's a oracle exe then app then oracle as a product then a particular version there's a folder name called network then admin then here you can find this dns names dot you say this I'll show you that path again. Inside your Oracle XE app, Oracle product, 11 point is version, server, network, admin. In this location, you can find this TNS names.org. This is standard for Oracle. This is your service name. 
service ID, XC, host name, port number. So that information you can find this at tnsnames.orafl or I means Oracle from. Okay. So default, this is the default whenever you install Oracle Express Edition, the SID is XE, port number is 1521, host name. That is my mission name. If you install Enterprise Edition, then that will be ORCL. That will be ORCL. Port number will be same, host will be same. Okay. Now, so now we are able to connect this local machine database. So let's create this link service. Create this link service. Then if you want to connect and migrate the data, we can use a copy activity. First, I'll show you. We'll create a new pipeline. New folder I'll create. On-prem to cloud. So inside that, I'll create a new pipeline. So I'll create a pipeline name. Article to Aerialist Gender. You can minimize this pipeline name and drag in the, this copy activity. So we need a source data set, sync data set. So we need to create a two data set for source and sync. The sync is nothing but target. Create a new folder again here, data sets. On-prem to this time creating a separate folder to manage data sets and pipelines separate. Okay. So create a new data set, which is a database, on-premises database, Oracle. So we already create a link service. So select that link service, provide this data set name as Oracle employees. Okay. Select the table name here. You'll get a table name. Just write a search here. the HR dot employees. It's a table name. Okay. So you can preview the data. This option called preview the data. It will show you the data. It will connect on premises database. I can connect and get the data from on premises. This is a preview data which you can verify. You see, it's a table. It is having some employee information. You see this. So HR is the schema. Inside that table name is available. That's the employees table. Now create another data set. The target is new data set. It's a Azure and data like Django. It's a CSV file. I'm going to create a delimited file. DS ADLS Gen2 employees CSV. Select that link service where you want to create a file. Select that location. I want to create a file inside this landing. Inside this, just I want to create that file. That's all. So you, you can import schema, you can none, and you can provide the file name, any file name you can provide here. Okay, otherwise default the table name will be created as. So first row is a header while creating a CSV file, it will create and a delimiter, which delimiter you want, consider pipe delimiter I want. Then compression, if you want to do the compression, you can choose any of this compression. Okay, I'm going with the compression. Now select these two data sets, source data set as which is on-premises table and uh, sync data set it is ADLS Gen2 this one okay now validate no issues no issues then debug meantime you can go and verify data like Gen2 inside data lake container landing so here nothing is available right just wait a few minutes it will be available just a refresh here it has a queued queued is nothing but it is connecting on premises mission now you see copy done success you can click on details you can see this on premises to oracle 104 records this is a data election to one file it is written 107 records go and refresh here we are not given any name, file name, so by default, your schema name dot table name will be created. So go and verify this data. This data is created. You say this data is created. Okay, pipe is the delimiter, header also you can find this. So this way which we can migrate data from on-premises to cloud using self-hosted integration runtime. Self-hosted integration runtime. So then we will understand next video how to move files from on-premises to data like Gento if you have multiple files. 
So this is one table like static approach. If you want to go with the dynamic, we need to create a parameterization. So what we did, we created a link service for file system using a self-hosted integration runtime. We created a link service for on-premises Oracle database using self-hosted integration runtime. So self-hosted integration runtime is very important concept, mainly migrating data from on-premises Windows machine to cloud. It may be database, it may be file system. Okay, so this is about how to connect on-premises database, how to migrate the data. In next video, we will understand how to copy multiple files from on-premises using this link service. That's a file link service, file system, we already created a link service with the help of self-hosted integration runtime. Then we will move multiple files from on-premises to data like Z. See you in another video. Thank you.